Welcome to Bunnyfish Crafts. I'm your host Heather, known as Bunnyfish on Ravelry, Instagram, YouTube, and Patreon. Today is Sunday the 19th of January 2020. This is the second episode of 2020. Oh, there is Molly being a little blanket dog. So it is chilly today. We got about six inches overnight, um, not last night, but the night before. And then it turned into rain, so it's rain on top of snow outside. Super fun. I don't have children right this minute, but I will be picking mine up from somewhere in the middle of Ohio today. <laughs> They're with their dad. There is not anything administrative going on in the group right now, so let's just get into knitting content. Oh, I guess first, um, what am I wearing? I am wearing a shawl designed by Josh Ricks. It's a three color fingering weight shawl. Um, I used Premier Serenity Sock in black and this is charcoal and the charcoal is over dyed with Easter egg leftovers and then the green is Knit Picks Stroll Tonal and Canopy and that pattern name will be at the bottom of the screen. I don't wear a ton of shawls I don't make a lot of shawls, I'm sure you've noticed, um, but I really like this one. It's kind of smallish. Um, I used 50 gram balls and a leftover ball for mine. So it's a smaller thing, just enough to wrap around on days when it's a little bit chilly and I need just a, another layer right here. And I think that this area right here just adds a lot of fun and texture without it being too, too big to wrap around. I like the idea of ginormous shawls, but there, then where do you put all of that fabric? Serious question, where do you put all that fabric when you have a giant shawl? Because I'm tempted to maybe make one, but I don't know if I would actually use it. I finished a pair of socks this week. Last week, where was I? Did I have the first sock finished? I don't think I had the first sock finished, which would mean I was only in the blue section. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so I think I was here. I think I was just in the blue section. So I did the entire rest of this sock. No, no, no. I was not here. This must be the second sock because the first sock I decided not to put black on the cuff. I remember now. So I had the first sock finished last week and now the second sock is finished and I was in the blue section last week. There we go. Um, I did the same heel of course because my feet are, well I guess not of course. You could have two totally different size slash shaped foot feet so you might do different things for a left sock and right sock. My feet are pretty much the same. They're pretty symmetrical. My left foot is a smidge bigger, but not enough to notice for socks. So I used the same heel. I went up to 40 stitches. I'm really liking the way that's working out. And now that they are finished, I still have some ends to weave in. I tried to weave in as many ends as I went um, as possible, but you see I still have this orange one because sometimes I would forget to weave in the end before starting the new color. Oh, I did really good on this sock, actually. I only have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ends to weave in. That's pretty good for a sock that has seven colors. So good job me. I think I have more on the first sock to weave in than on the second sock. So the this pattern is one of mine. It's called Scrapasaurus and it's available for purchase on Ravelry. The yarn that I used was Premier Serenity Sock in black and then all of the colorful yarns came from a ZK mini skein pack. And <laughs> I have a significant amount of those minis left still. So I've, for those of you who are keeping track, I used them in the Nightingale socks and now I use them in these Scrapasaurus socks. And that's all I finished. So let me show you my next, one of my next works in progress. This is a new cast on from last week. So I finished those socks and I was like, well, I want to make 
rainbow scrappy socks for a few other people. So I cast on this. And um, it's using all of the ZK Mini skeins. So I have not yet used this pink color in a pair of socks, but I decided for this, instead of throwing in a black heel, I would throw in a pink heel and have the full set of mini skeins in here. This is just going to be a shorty sock. I'm actually really, really close to finishing. So you can see right here, yes, right here, um, I have that red stripe put in. So I am going to do the cuff in red, which means after the heel, I have transition rows from on this yellow here all the way up to um, just before this red row starts is how much more of the sock I need to knit in order to have it finished and then a bind off. So this sock will likely be finished today. So because it is Sunday, I do Scrappy Sunday and this is a scrappy sock. So I'll probably do work on this a good bit today. And then um, over this shoulder, that is where I sit next to my dog. And right here is a corner to corner blanket. And right here is a mitered square blanket. So those are the two projects that I will be working on before I pick up my kids after I go have breakfast with my friend. It's, um, what is it, nine o'clock in the morning about? Yeah, and we're meeting at 10. So we're gonna have breakfast and then I'm gonna come back and sit. I don't know when I'm picking up my kids because they are doing family Christmas celebration with their dad right now and they don't have school tomorrow. So I don't actually care when I pick them up. So I might get a lot of um, scrappy work done today, but I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to take this to breakfast and I'm also going to take a non-scrappy project to breakfast. So this is all the same information. Oh, I guess I haven't said that I work my socks, generally speaking, on US size zero 2.0 millimeter needles. And both of these socks were worked on double points. Both of these projects were worked on double points. Yes, that sounds better. Um, which is not my go-to method for sock knitting. I did learn how to knit on double points because that's what Walmart had when I went to find <laughs> knitting supplies. Um, but it's not my favorite. It's not bad. It's functional. I just find the, I find anything that's not a nine inch circular kind of fiddly for knitting socks, but it still works. And when you have a billion pairs of socks on the go, you use all of your sock needles. So next up is another new cast on before I check in with my cast ons from last week. And this is going to be a tube sock for my daughter, unicorn tube socks. So this is a pattern that I will be releasing soon. Um, probably right after I finish this pair of socks because I can get modeled, um, modeled, not mottled, finished objects, object pictures on my daughter's feet. And then she'll have to give them back because they're for Christmas. Um, or I could just model them on my feet, whichever. Oh, I could do both. Mm, that might be a thing. So I am using Premier Serenity Sock in this purple color. I have, is it on my desk? It's somewhere on my desk, but it's under things. Um, I had a 35 gram remnant left, so I picked that up for the cuffs. I'll use it for the toes. I'm not going to put heels into this because it's for my daughter and she's nine. And I think right now she wears a size two shoe, two to three but eventually her feet are gonna grow, so I want her to be able to wear these socks as long as possible. And uh, if I put a, a heel in for a size three child sock, I'm not going to be able to take them over when she outgrows them. So this uh, rainbowy color is Lion Brand Yarns Manny Petty in the crew colorway. 
So pick this up at Joann's. Um, I'm just using a 50 gram ball. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to knit this tube section until I run out of this yarn. And then I am going to knit a toe on and then I'm going to split it to put the cuff and toe on the respective socks and ears on a mane and then I'm going to duplicate stitch eyes onto the sock to be unicorns. It's super fun. I really really like this pattern and I'm excited to get it out there to people. Um, as soon as I finish the sock I can get pictures. So this has been, I started this pretty late this week, maybe Thursday, but it's a vanilla sock so Whenever I have been in line, I had several meetings and stuff on Friday. Um, school meetings, not for my children in particular, but like as a school-wide meeting. So I took this to that. And I will also be taking this to breakfast. So if this is too much brain power, because sometimes it is, I'll be able to work on this vanilla sock. And actually, I'm going to, while I'm thinking about it, move up this progress keeper um, because that was marking my progress from yesterday. So I have daily progress keepers that because I am posting photos right now on Instagram every day of what my daily crafting progress is. I'm just doing it through January and then I'll do it intermittently through the rest of the year, but I thought it would be a fun way to keep up the spirit of daily vlogging. Now let's check in on a couple sock projects that I had last week. I was working on the Cozy Knitter, the first sock for the Cozy Knitter, so that was the 2018 Advent yarn, and I finished it. So here is the first sock. And I decided to just work through as many stripes on that second repeat as I could. And I did not make it through the second repeat, as you can see. Much shorter than the leg. Haley, who um, sent this yarn to me, gave me some, you know, important-ish information. Uh, the inspiration is on the inside labels, which I didn't look at, but... That's the inspiration for the colorways, and this first colorway, the 2018 colorway, has three full repeats of the color stripe sequence on the, um, the <laughs> words. This colorway has three stripe sequences for the 50 gram skein, and then the second one it's only two stripe sequences for the 50 gram skein. So I am two on this sock. I am starting this part right here where I do the straight rounds above the heel. And I do not have 12 stripes. Not 12, 24. It's a 24 stripe. Repeat, I don't have 24. I will not make it to 24. Um, this corally pink color is going to be number 16, so I will not have the full repeat on the leg. That's okay. I will probably get stripes 16 and 17 on the leg, or 16 and part of 17 on the leg, and then, no, I think 16 and 17, because this is two stripes, so I might even get to part of 18 on this sock, and then put in the heel in black again and then work down the foot. So this should be a finished project next week. Should be. Um, it's pretty uncomplicated. I'm able to do this part of the foot during work. I could probably do the entire sock at work, but since the, well, now that I'm past the, um, This pattern is called self-striping and it is a free Ravelry download and the pattern has eight repeats around. So now that I'm down to half of that number, only four, it would be much more manageable to fix a mistake if I made a mistake while I was working um, 
in the lunchroom and the stockinette part, you know, I just work stockinette when I hit that. So this could potentially be worked on at school. Um, most likely this first, finish this tube and then this, but I should have this project finished by next week because, oh my goodness, we're two thirds of the way through the month. I don't know why having half of the month left seems like so much more than a third of the month, but it just does, even though it's only the matter of four days. It just seems like so much more time when we're halfway through the month. I realized it was the 19th this morning and I was like, I have so much to finish, but I don't actually have that much to, like I have a lot to finish, but nothing that I can't finish by the end of the month. The other project that I am, the other sock project that I'm working on from last week is the Aquaphobia sock and I believe that last week, this is the first sock, and I believe that I was here last week on the first sock. Had I started the second sock? I don't remember. And I don't remember when the stitch marker is from. So I think that I, I had started the first sock. I think I had both socks started. And so I worked down this on the second sock to where I needed to change needle sizes. So I've put this on the new needle size and I am working down the smaller needle size. So the top, the cuff and the top part of the calf were knit on a US size 2, 2.75 millimeter and the leg portion is knit on a US size 1, 2.25 millimeter needle. So that's where one of the socks is and then the other sock is worked to the heel because at the heel I again change needle size down to a US size 0 2.0 millimeter needles and I don't know I don't know where I was on this last week I don't think I put in a weekly progress marker I think that I was probably to the needle change last week on this sock pretty sure. So I worked this entire from here up this week. And again, this, um, this front part is slip stitches. So even though it's curving right now, when you put it on, it lays more like this. I'll insert a picture. I took, took a picture yesterday of this on my leg. So lots of progress on this. This could also potentially be done next week if I actually focus on it, which would be exciting. Three pairs of finished socks in the next seven days. Um, obviously, I've been working on them since the beginning of the month, but that, that system really, really works for me. Um, I know a lot of people go back and forth on being monogamous or not. I'm not good at knitting monogamy because I need different projects for different things. Like I need something super mindless for working in the lunchroom. Um, something that I can literally drop hanging from my apron and help with the situation. Um, so even though aquaphobia is not particularly complicated, there are slip stitches going on and they're alternating slip stitches. There's little micro cables. So I wouldn't take, I might take now that it's on the the, well, once it's to the bottom of the foot um, and I can put it on a nine inch circular, I might take it, but I definitely don't want to take anything with double points or magic loop into the lunchroom because it's just too much to manage. Um, but I also, when I'm just sitting down and watching a movie with my kids or hanging out, I don't want something completely mindless all the time. So it's nice to have something with a little bit of texture, a little bit going on. Um, the self-striping socks, you know, they have a little bit of a pattern repeat. It's just a two row repeat, but it's enough to be engaging. And then my last work in progress from last week to this week is this blanket. So last week I was somewhere in this 
um, green, not green, aqua textured section. And I finished that. And then, because working 30 minutes on a project is kind of amazing, I'm doing this for the Make 30 for 30 challenge that um, Natalie of Love and Stitches is kind of hosting. It's an unofficial craft along. Um, I guess some people are even doing yoga. You can do whatever you want for 30 minutes for 30 days. It ends on February 3rd. So, and I missed a 30 a day. On Friday, I had all those meetings and I was, I usually drop off the kids and either I do this before they wake up in the morning or once they wake up, it's too hectic, so I don't do it. And then if that is the case, then I drop them off at school and between going, bleh, and between coming home and going back to work, that's when I work on this. But on Friday, I didn't have any chunk of time that worked, so I didn't do it on Friday. But I finished that chunk of aqua, and then I came to this side, uh, <clears throat> and I worked um, with this skein of yarn. So this looks like a few different skeins. It's actually, it's called a baby bundle by Bernat, and it's four different textures of yarn into that. So there's this brown Bernat blanket texture this pink, um, feels like, a, what is that, Homespun by Lion Brand. Then there's like some, oh, it's not like a fun fur, but it's like a fuzzy textured yarn. And then this pink that's kind of a, it's not a really nice texture, actually. It's, um... I don't know if it's supposed to be like a wool ease type thing, but I wouldn't use it. I wouldn't choose that for a baby uh, project. But anyway, I used that full skein of yarn, and then I had a pretty good partial skein of this. And so I did a, um, this is called crocheted moss stitch, I think. So I did that, and then now I'm back to aqua. I was debating back and forth last week if I would put the aqua, if I would bookend it on either side, or if I would just have a really large chunk on the one side. And the deciding factor was that I did not want to do the same texture, the one that I had been working down there. Um, it's just a crossed stitch, but it was taking too long. I didn't want to do that anymore. So I am... Um, I'm almost to the end of this first row, or maybe I am to the end of, I am to the end of this first row of double crochet, and I'm trying to decide. I have 10 minutes to go for my 30 minutes. I don't always do them in one go. I usually break them into two 15s or three 10s. Um, so I have 10 minutes to go, and I'm kind of thinking that maybe I want to do a bobble stitch, or like a popcorn stitch. But I don't know. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see how I feel when I get back to do this for 10 minutes. And I might do one of those stitches for 10 minutes and then rip it all out tomorrow. Who knows? But this blanket is almost finished because this is the last ball that I have of this, I think. It's the last ball that's going in here, anyway. It's very squishy. And all of the children have been like, oh, that's really soft and squishy. So it will get used for sure. I think I'm actually going to put it away for my sister for Christmas. She no longer watches my podcast, so I can say that without worrying about it. And then I started a new spinning project. Do I already have spinning projects going? Yes. Should I work on them? Probably. But I walked into knitting on Wednesday and the lady who is always there when I'm there, she doesn't own it, she just works there, um, she knows I spin and she said, hey, so I have this fiber that I've had in my stash for about five years and her sister sent it to her 
It's just some fiber from a farm and it's sheep, but it doesn't specify a breed of sheep. Um, it also doesn't have a weight of um, grams and I didn't weigh it before I started spinning it. But it's been sitting in her stash for about five years and she has a spinning wheel, but she's never used it. So she asked if I would spin this into yarn for her. She didn't care what it turned out as, just she wondered if she could commission a spin. So I said yes. And it's really, really pretty. And it's not very compacted at all. It drafts really, really well. You can see that just all I did was I took it out of the braid and it was in this pencil roaming form inside a braid. So I think it was four four strands of this held together. I'm spinning that and I'm trying to do like 15-ish minutes a day. She doesn't care when it gets back to her, but I also don't want to be holding on to it forever. And I really, really like spinning. I just always feel like knitting has... Um, I always feel like I have a challenge for knitting and I don't have a challenge for spinning and maybe if I had more spinning challenges to join into I would spin more so I'm pretty excited about this it's not super soft but it is spinning up really nicely and the colors are really pretty so I'm enjoying that and then I don't have any modular things yet because I I think I did one, you know what, I have one flower. I'll put that in from last week. And today is Scrappy Sunday, so I guess I will have some things to show because I'm hoping to work on Scrappy things. So here's the Scrappy Parade. And then onto my reading list. So I finished Where the Crawdads Sing and I really liked it. And there was a twist at the end, which is I think what the person who hated it didn't like, but I appreciated it. Um, I would recommend it if you like kind of slice of life-ish novels, which is not usually my thing, but I did enjoy this. I have also read a little more in... What are you doing? You're making a lot of snorfles over there. Um... I've also read a, a chapter or two in the Mia Michaels book that I was reading, being a unicorn, something about unicorns and donkeys. I've read a couple chapters in that this week, and I started reading the book on Huga, which I may have read before but don't remember, so I'm going to keep reading that. Um, I've not started a new fiction book since I finished Where the Crawdads Sing in physical form, but I have quite a drive to go see um, my children's dad to drop them off and then to pick them up. So on Friday, one of the many things that I did was I went to the library and I picked up some audiobooks. I picked up too many audiobooks, really. Do I need all of these? No. Did I get them anyway? Yes. So, I picked up this and this, which I will talk more in depth when I get there, but I started listening to A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms, which I actually have in physical copy, and I started reading in physical copy, but I'm sure I've talked about this on the podcast before, but it bears repeating because it's been a while. I am not super great about reading books that I purchase anymore. I used to be great at that um, back in high school. <laughs> My best friend and I would go to Barnes & Noble and pick up a book. We would each pick up a book every week and then we would read our respective books and then swap them. So we would read two books a week. And now I need the deadline of having to return it at the library or else I'll just pick up the book and it will sit on my shelf for a very long time. There are a couple notable exceptions, but generally speaking, if it's my book, I'll just be like, well, I can, I can read it at any point. So I saw this. Normally I go to the nonfiction section for audiobooks, but I went to the fiction section 
Um, I just happened to walk to the fiction section, not on purpose. And I was like, well, since I'm here, let's see what's available. And I, I don't find this spine as compelling as a regular book spine. Um, because the way that I normally choose what I'm going to read is based on cover or spine of the book. So I, yeah, this isn't super compelling, not as compelling as the book, but I decided that instead of trying to look at titles or anything, I would just go to some authors who had some work that I hadn't read. And I picked up this and another audiobook by George R. R. Martin. The other one is a collection of short stories, I think. So this is a prequel to the um, the Game of Thrones series, which I've read all of the books that are out so far in that series. I think it's actually called A Song of Fire and Ice. The series name for books, not for TV, I don't recall. But this is a prequel. It happens, are you ready? One of the characters, spoiler alert, is Aegon Tar Targaryen. Pretty sure the same Aegon who's in the books later on. So this is, yeah, this takes place nearly a century before um, the, game, the Game of Thrones series. And I am also listening to the expats on, um, on play away. So this is really nice for parent pickup line because I don't want to have my car running for an hour to listen to a podcast while I'm waiting for kids. And I also don't want to just have my battery draining for an hour. So I can just listen to this in the parent pickup line. Instead, um, I picked it up purely based on the title and the no, just the title. I don't know anything about this author. I've never heard of this book, but I was in the play away section because I was like, oh, I could use those. I really, really like play aways for when I'm walking at the park, which is not a thing I can do right now, but theoretically I like them for that. Um, and this one, even though I'm not listening to it yet, this one I picked up because I've also had that book on my shelf for a very, very long time with the intent to read it since high school or college, college, since college, and I just haven't. So that is all I have for you this week. And my nephew is very patiently waiting to come out of his room so he can eat. So I'm going to finish this up. It was really, really great seeing you guys. I will see you in a week. Make sure to comment below if you have any questions, if you have any thoughts on anything I'm working on or anything you're working on. Um, head over to Patreon if you are able to. Yeah. Oh, that spiel is never going to get any less awkward, I don't think. <laughs> Bye.